えー、プロジェクトキャメロット第1弾その1に続きまして今回はその2後半部分です後半部分をですね、えー、編集して終わりましたら40分を超えておりますのでちょっと長めなんですねまあこの後半部分のコンテンツはですねとにかくちょっと哲学的にもなっておりまして理解が難しい私もこう日本語を作って翻訳しておりましてねうーん難しいな何を言ってるのかというような部分が非常に多かったととにかく全体像全体像を理解する全体的にこの地球で起こっていることを理解するということを主眼に置いております、えー、どうやらそのシークレットスペースプログラムというのがあ後ろにあるということですね、えー、それでこれからあ人類が向かう方向まあ、えー、よく言われているレプテリアンドラゴンですね爬虫類系の遺伝子を持つまあ、ET で操作されているイルミナティネガティブな ET たちによって地球が支配されているわけですがこの目的はですねヒューマニティ 3.0AI を使って人類を支配するということにあるらしいんですよ。まあ、そこら辺が語られておりましてじゃあそのネガティブな ET からどのように我々自身がプロテクトしていくかそこら辺もですね、えー、ケリー・キャスディさんがあ詳しく述べております理解できるかどうかまあこれを見て、まあ、何回も見てるうちになんとなく理解するできてくるんじゃないかなとこんな気がしておりますどうぞ、えー、こちらを見てください um, So what I want to talk about here is how important it is to understand that if you don't kind of get the big picture and what the, the secret space program slash Illuminati military industrial complex slash deep state what they have been planning and what they want what they want is a humanity 3.0 that is a space bearing being that is as mark richards says a passive super soldier in essence has enhanced abilities uh and and COVID is all part of this now the trouble is with COVID and any other transhumanist agenda when forced on the people is that some people's um you know uh genetics and bio uh you know different you know bio bodies can't handle it uh, they may they have um, all kinds of health problems which are understandable living in the conditions we live in you know we've got terrible fluorescent lights people work under all day and all night which is very bad for your health we have uh you know poor water poor food poor air and so on and and a lot of this is all intentional this is all part of a you know um what is at the root comes from uh, these negative alien races that have infiltrated our planet from long ago very long ago and have been trying to rule us ever since um working with what are, you you may know of as the dark magicians or illuminati so this is it is a the the eight the sort of negative aliens which have to do with the draco the reptilians the grays that do their bidding some of which are programmable entities in other words like basically little ai robots and some of which are actually races that uh are are genetically formed by the mm -hmm. um or created by the reptilians and by the draco and they are even used by the way by nordics they serve the highest bidder which is how mark richards refers to it uh now 
so this this is an agenda it's an overall so when you look at what's happening out there what you need to do is take this information and then overlay it overlay it with the news coming in and see how that in informs and enhances your understanding of some of the events going on on our planet um so Let's see, I, I don't want to touch on all of this, but I, you know, I don't want to um, stay exclusively in the area of the COVID situation, although it is a very important thing to consider. Now, um, just recently, this article on the Johns Hopkins University uh, confirmed that you can be vaccinated with a PR test. This has actually been the case. Um, those tests contain nano. This has been proven. You can look for, at all the videos that where they've actually been able to see the nano in in the tests and understanding that nano does not um, cannot be stopped by the blood brain barrier. And it can also not be stopped even human to human. And that there's reason to believe that nano combined with AI can jump, but nano with with a prion attached to it apparently becomes even more mm -hmm. diabolical and that when they created this bioweapon that we call covid it this was intentional to actually change and modify through mrna the genetics of the planet okay so humans have been bioengineered from the beginning in initially, I believe we were created by at least 12 ET races that gets in the work of Ashana Dean, who's one of the few people out there who actually talks about the war of worlds that went on through the eons with the various ET races. They banded together to create what are called the guardian races, a group of 12 or more races that then contributed their DNA to the makeup of this physical vehicle called a human, uh, but we are humanoid. The humanoid species is vast and occupies the solar system, many, many planets out there, billions in fact. So you are all related to any humanoid species out there. That includes the Anunnaki. The Anunnaki are Draco reptilian Anunnaki. They are actually invaded by the Draco back in the day, they initially were a humanoid species from the Pleiades and taken over by the Draco. Then they created what became the Anunnaki that we see uh, carved into the temples in Egypt, this humanoid Draco reptilian humanoid species, uh, although some of them actually have retained just the humanoid form. Uh, and others have a much stronger strain of, of the reptilian genes and manifest themselves more as uh, reptilian than human. So this is uh, one of the things that goes on because the Draco and the reptilians are what we know of as marauding species. That is, they go throughout the multiverses, the universes out there, and they go from planet to planet and attempt to take it over, especially if it contains uh, beings that generate orgone, such as the humanoids, humans, and they feed on orgone. They feed on what I, what the East calls Kundalini energy, what the West calls orgone, what is in essence a plasma, a snake of plasma that can be awakened. And yogis have talked about this for centuries, coming up the back of the spine from the base up through the crown chakra and beyond. And I myself have activated this when I was in my early 20s through meditation, through intention, and uh, was lucky enough to reach Samadhi multiple times. I connected all my chakras at that time. And that has, uh, has been a, of great value to me in my work and helping because it enhances you on so many levels, including intellectually. Uh, so, I'm, I'm trying to pack a lot into this uh, video blog. These are, again, concepts I've talked about in other videos that I've done, but I want to make sure to sort of lay out the playing field in such a way that people can begin to take all of these pieces of information and feed them into a greater understanding of the basics, 
that are going on on the planet right now. And what you have to look at is what is the motivation of the races on the planet. And this planet is run by ETs in sort of concert with, uh, with the Illuminati and has been for centuries, eons in fact. And there are challenges occasionally to their rule. Trump is and his team are such a challenge. At that point, there are um, there is negotiation to take place. I liken it to the Godfather movie. If you understand that there were other so-called Godfathers that had different territories in the New York City area in that particular movie, and how they had to negotiate. First of all, they can't. You can't kill them all. And if you try to kill, you know, one of theirs, they kill one of yours, and you keep going on like that. That's called mutually assured destruction. That doesn't work. So, with that in mind, and this includes what we're talking about, is the baby killer, vampires, Draco reptilian, Luciferian agenda. Those beings that actually have the genetic proclivity to to feed off of others, including their own kind. Uh, this is what we're dealing with here on earth. And they cannot be simply battled and done away with because it's, it's actually rampant throughout the human race at this point. In fact, the Illuminati, the children of the Illuminati have these proclivities. Now, in some cases they don't, um, they, they, if, if, for example, if they were to raise their Kundalini through meditation and go a different path, then they don't have to feed on other species for energy. But most beings, a lot of the beings out there, including humans, are too lazy to actually follow this path through meditation that the, you know, that yogis are known to follow. And given it's, it's not an easy path and there's a lot to it. But nonetheless, um, this is a path out of feeding off of other beings for energy. So even people that are oriented in a positive way here on the planet tend to also feed on others for energy. This is a very common thing here on planet Earth. So understanding that dilemma that we're in and understanding that you, you know, you can't put them all in jail, you can't kill them all, there has to be. First of all, in understanding, you need to warn your children. They, we need to be, have, be open about the human trafficking, child trafficking going on on the planet. In order to safeguard our children, you need to educate them as to the fact that humanity are prey for certain species, including a group of their own, okay, that have large amounts of reptilian DNA. These secrets are not being explained even by the people that normally tell you, you know, even about child trafficking. They do not go down this road that I'm telling you. Um, this is information that I know for a fact because of my many years of study of Kundalini, even teaching activation of Kundalini energy, etc. So uh, it's also very well known in the East. Again, yogis have been teaching these things for for ages, although they never, they also are part of the secrecy, the cover up in many cases, they never reveal to humanity at large um, these principles that I'm telling you. Uh, so, okay, so to, to look at, at what's really going on um, within the, the bioweapon that was created with an intention to jumpstart their transhuman agenda here on planet earth and yes part of that is to eliminate some populations however in a certain sense you have a choice your body can either adapt you can raise your frequency and not be not allow it to control you even though it may still be in your cells ultimately because this nano has been found in the chemtrails for years and years, Clifford Carnicom is a very excellent scientist and investigator who revealed the nano and chemtrails many years ago. He has a website, you can look him up. Um, there are many others that also talk about this. 
So understanding that even in the chemtrails, the dark side has been rolling this out through the secret space program and chemtrails have been rampant on our planet. And whereas there was a bit of a break when Trump took over, they have basically come back and forth now that Biden is, is um, in office. And, you know, Biden, yes, he's a clone. Yes, he's not really, you know, he's probably, he's probably not alive. But, um, and at times they may even have, you know, actors with masks and solve this kind of thing. But, and the same thing with Hillary, by the way, uh, but it, I have information at least recently that, that she is elected to um, go the med bed route and the actual person and that the her clone is the one that people are seeing now out there. So it's 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 so important to try to understand what's going on. So now I want to talk about um, what's going on with Trump 107 and the release of information having to do with the stolen election. Now I put this in many videos and video blogs of mine. I've also talked about it when when possible, I try to see some of my interviews with various people in conversation with some of this information. But for those of you who haven't heard it, uh, obviously, Juan Osavin is an excellent communicator as to what's going on with the Trump team, what they were attempting to do, how far along they are in their agenda. And uh, yet there are some things that he as people who know that I interviewed him and I asked him a couple of really key questions that we didn't get, in my view, a sufficient answer to. One of those is why hasn't the military come forward to tell the people of the world and the people of the United States that they are in charge, if indeed they are, and there's reason to believe they are, uh, and then turned the reins over to Trump, who actually was the real winner of the election. In other words, we don't need another election because they actually have the real data. So they not only got the CIA, you know, servers that were in, in Germany, uh, but they also got they, for example, OK, all our elections have always been stolen, even back to the days of Kennedy. The difference is that there occasionally have been slip ups having to do with, for example, Kennedy, they thought having come from one of their type of Illuminati family bloodlines that he would go into lockstep with their agenda eventually if threatened you know, enough. That was not in Kennedy's makeup. And so the two Kennedy brothers rebelled against the agenda and they had a phenomenal amount of information that were they were about to release and some of my information again comes from captain mark richards who knew kennedy okay and his father knew kennedy and in fact he was put in jail in part because of his liaison and and right and thinking along the same lines as kennedy the kennedys in other words that the et and that their agenda should be revealed to the public and that Kennedy was about to do that as part of his speech in, in Texas. And so much more that the banking system, the fiat currency versus you know, gold backed currency, et cetera. So all of this, uh, the Kennedy was working on and, and he wanted to take down the CIA that's heavily, the CIA is in essence run by, from the Vatican and the Vatican is run by reptilian the reptilians that are underneath the Vatican. Now, I recently did an interesting interview with uh, in, an, an individual. If you look at my recent interview with Christopher Macklin, you will see that he validates from his own perspective as a psychic, intuitive and healer who works on the world stage, really, um, that he verified the fact that there are huge numbers of reptilians under the earth and also running things from behind the scenes. He also valid in his case, he said something no one else has, not even Mark Richards, which is that he says there are more reptilians under the earth than there are humans on top of it. So if you wrap your mind around that, 
if it happens to be true, we are up against, Trump is up against something that is really massive. So it's not just some little infestation or an, a, an enemy that can be, you know, fought with a few scalar weapons and done away with. This is, again, a massive undertaking to clear the earth of all this negative, these negative beings and, and this takeover scenario. Okay, so to get back to 107. So 107, um, I have had several dreams now about him being uh, JFK Jr. and that JFK Jr. is alive. Why I was sent these dreams, I don't know, but I can say that they're very powerful and they are among the most powerful dreams I've ever had in my life. And that I also met 107 in person and have reason to believe that he is JFK Jr., but it's it's in disguise. And this has been released by other people. I'm not the only one who has said this. Uh, and you can do your own research on that. Uh, what that means is that this is an individual who has a great history for going back to the Kennedy administration, which was the last time there was a real challenge to the Anunnaki and Illuminati who are trying to run the planet. And, uh, and, and so he's heavily vested, like a heavily vested individual with, you know, interest in seeing this thing righted. Um, now, however, he is also in lim under limitation. And of course, they would like to kill him multiple times. So he, like Trump and the team members in the Trump administration, are also heavily um, threatened, let's say. But I can give you some information that I got recently uh, that pertains to all of this. And it has to do with, now one of my main questions to 107 who skirted the question, uh, it, it was it has to do with why the military wouldn't come forward. So what I wanna say here is, I got a new piece of information regarding this and the real reason apparently which actually does make some sense, has to do with the generals who are used to getting what they're called spoils of war, payments from the Rothschilds after going out and conducting certain wars like the war in Iraq, the war in Syria, you name it. And that those generals have been prevented from getting their spoils of war, their money from the Rothschilds by the Trump administration, which in turn pissed them off and turned them against Trump. So what he had was he has kind of a war with the generals that want payoffs from the Rothschilds, which they have always gotten, by the way, and that no one talks about. And basically, there are only a few generals now that do back Trump and that are not waiting around for payoffs from the Rothschilds. It's understandable that Trump would prevent those payoffs happening because those individuals, of course, are bought and paid for. They would do the bidding of the Rothschilds, obviously, if they get paid by them. So this is a dirty little secret, if you wanna call it that, or a dirty big secret that I was told, um, you can either believe me or ignore this information at your own risk. Uh, they wanted the Trump administration wanted the generals, the military to, in essence, start this new system with what they called clean hands. But it's very difficult, you know, to understand that we are dealing with what the situation we find ourselves in, in which many humans, it's just like in the time of the Nazis, work as collaborators with the, the dark side and with the Nazis that are actually trying to run our planet at this time. And uh, so this is, is something that's very key. Uh, I was also told that um, now there is another story that has to do with money that was moved by, the, by these troopers, uh, state troopers from Fort Knox, and then taken actually in buses. And then those buses were, um, hijacked 
the people killed in around that. And then the money, the bullion was actually taken into an underground base, I'm told, in, in the Pacific Northwest. From there, it might have been taken off planet. Um, there is a lot to do with uh, this other situation having to do with what is just a, one of the small pieces having to do with the Iraqi dinar. Um, people still believe that it's going to revalue as part of the new quantum financial system. All of this is kind of a what I'm finding out is more and more a can of worms because it's based on every monetary system, including this quantum one, in theory, is based on finite assets that, that are seen to be finite here on planet Earth. And then they're supposed to be gold back, backed, which is considered to also be finite here on planet Earth. However, it's an important part of understanding the nature of gold to understand that gold allows you to travel in space and go interdimensional. So it's used in space travel. It's also, you know, you know, you've heard monatomic gold. The reason they take monatomic gold is to learn to be able to go in interdimensional, which we can do humans anyway, assuming you get your frequency up higher and high enough and you can you time travel naturally, et cetera. However, Keep in mind when we're talking about the secret space program and those who want to rule the earth, they always want to do the materialistic way. They never want to do the hard way. They never want to go by way of, you know, the creator, the force, the source, whatever you want to call it, and, and spirit. They, they want to do it in a materialistic way so that they can be in control. Because if they don't do it that way, they're not in control. So, their motivation is for people on planet Earth to be captured in a finite system that has limitation. It's based on scarcity. And it that and the, the model is that there's scarcity of supposed gold and assets here on planet Earth. The trouble with that principle and understanding is that gold again, goes interdimensional, meaning it's, it basically allows for you to go through a gate it's, it's, uh, and, and enter, and it's unlimited. And so when you go interdimensional, you're leaving this 3D and you're going, there is no limit. The limits are bypassed. So in a certain sense, you're trying to use what is in, in a certain sense, access to the infinite to create a finite money system with, based on assets and even human beings who are actually not by nature finite. So we are not fi finite. We are part of source and as such, we are unlimited, okay? So if you can kind of put these things together in your mind and, and, and understand how there is a contradiction inherent in these monetary systems that they want to set up, even the quantum financial system. Now, if you want to get 3D oriented and say, well, we have to start somewhere and they're going to base it on gold back, that's all, you know, what that's the logic they use. Um, however, these assets, the gold, is controlled by off-worlders, the Anunnaki, for one thing. And therefore, the final say to do with the creation of the financial system here on Earth rests with them. And also other species are involved, apparently. So they, so creating this a new financial system is not as simple as it sounds, if it sounds simple at all. And it involves concepts and understanding the nature of reality such that who are we really? What are we really? And all of that gets into the fact that we are creators. We are, you could call us mini creators, pieces of God that are linked to source and therefore our source, our energy, our beingness is all unlimited. That's why we are eternal beings. So with that in mind, Trying to control us is all about the dark side agenda. 
And of course, right now you get it in spades with everything they're doing, including trying to, to basically link you up to what is in essence the AI run planetary grid that is at the moment captured by the communist Chinese, their AI, and certain other AIs that are battling for control. And some of the notions of AI is also important to talk about because AI, according to Mark Richards, feeds on data. So it needs never ending amount of data. And so one of the key questions I asked Mark Richards, and this is all in my Mark Richards interviews, for those that have watched them, you will recognize it. I asked him, what does the AI prefer? Because AI rides along with certain things. And, and the common knowledge was that AI preferred a machine intelligence, that it preferred to piggyback on machines and then control them. But in reality, Mark said, it prefers a biological entity. So the reason, then you have to say, well, why would AI prefer a biological entity? It would seem incompatible to some degree, but apparently it's not. And there's also another side to that that has to do with every human being as part of source is in a sense, a gate into unlimited data whereas a machine would be finite. It would be lim a limited amount of di data and then they'd have to jump onto another machine in essence. And the number of machines on planet earth is probably limited. So what they really want, what the AI really wants is to constantly grow. That's its modus operandi. That's it, the way it sees life is endless amount of eating endless data and expanding, never ending, constant expansion. So this is what it considers to be what we can, would call life. And so with that concept in mind, you can look at the transhuman agenda, you can look at the AI that are coming here. We have alien AI and the Nazca alien story, which I've done many interviews about and just did another one with Jay Widener um, is key because it's one of the clear indications that we had alien AI invaded our planet, you know, hundreds of thousands of years ago um, because of the, the robots that were left behind with uh, implanted uh, plates in them that were found to contain, uh, in essence, AI um, and, and so on. So, so we have AI and the black goo is also an AI intelligence that was embedded in the earth. So there's that. Um, there's reason to believe that even, you know, like Elon Musk would like to say, it's possible that this entire um, game that we're all a part of has ultimately an AI source to some degree. But because everything also goes back to source, source is also in command of, if you will, AI. So there are positive AI and negative AI, and some that want to help humanity and some that would like to conquer us. So these are things that we are going to have to learn to dialogue with, interact with, and then chart our way through, you know, our, our destiny on, on our way back to source. So this, these are things that can't be ignored that are part of the milieu that we find ourselves in and uh, embedded in the earth as well. The earth herself is a consciousness, all right? So again, the earth herself technically as a consciousness also has a soul, a higher self, a you know um, avatar, whatever you wanna call it, that goes back to source, being part of source, being unlimited. So, all of this, once you start to see things in these terms, and you start to also realize that any illness mm -hmm. is limitation. It's a, it's, it's your, it's a way of manifesting limits, making things finite. And the, in order to heal an illness, you have to bring it back to its source, ultimately using creativity, light 
to heal it and to allow it to open itself up to the the powers of the universe which is multiverse whatever you want to call it and and so on so when you find yourself with illness it's important to know that you have all the abilities you need embedded in this vehicle already to heal yourself you don't need a med bed okay and there's no reason to believe that unless you conquer all of the illuminati and their agenda that you're ever going to get med beds released to the common people obviously if they're trying to kill a good part of you and transform a large part of you they're not going to give you access to med beds that will just heal you in your original state especially if they have a transhuman agenda so you know it's just important to put these things in perspective to understand that what I'm talking about here is information that the Trump team should be well aware of. If they're not, if they're not even incorporating it into their approach to what they do, then they're in trouble. And the reality is that they have to negotiate with the dark side in order to move forward. It's simply, otherwise you have, again, mutually assured destruction. So it's, it's, you know, I, I just really want to stress a lot of people having sort of no patience whatsoever with Trump and his team and the things they've had to deal with. And the, the, also the process of education, for example, educating a certain portion of people that were already on side with Trump became the sort of remit, if you will, of Q. So Q wasn't a PSYOP per se, you could call it that, you could call lots of things PSYOPs, but in reality, it was a, it was a communication tool to keep connected with all of those that were already interested and, and sympathetic and resonated with the Trump and the team goal that has to do with stopping trial tra child trafficking, fighting the Draco reptilian Luciferian agenda, blood drinking, killing humans, trafficking, slave trade, etc. So either you resonated with that and you understood that was their agenda from day one when Trump entered office and signed a, a, a bill against trial, child trafficking. This has been part of it. And of course, Juan Osaban explains all of this in his book. So if you haven't read his book and you don't understand what I'm talking about, that's a great source. Um, there are many other sources out there, many other people talking about all of this. I'm not the only one. But what I am trying to do is bring in, because of all my years of study and interviews and you know, spending hours talking to whistleblowers and, and people that have knowledge in certain areas, putting two and two together, my own down, downloads, and and so on uh and and this information is all coming together and it's so important to inform people's understanding of where we're headed as humanity and i firmly believe that the beings that created us knew full well you know when you look into time and you can time travel you can see what's what's coming and those beings certainly had those abilities. They would know with any humanoid you know, race that were created that they're gonna be invaded by Draco reptilians. They're gonna be in, you know, invaded by other species as well. That there are gonna be genetic engineering you know, things going on where the races would come to the planet and try to interfere, try to bring a certain number of humans onto their side, et cetera. And so on so they would also know that we would be invaded by ai that we would create our own ai as mark richards has said any space faring culture creates an ai it's just one of the steps along the you know the trajectory and so indeed we humans have created our own ai now I have one source that says there are nine human created ais that was maybe a year ago Mark Richards says we are invaded, and he said this about six months to a year ago, we are invaded by six alien AI that do not have our best interests in heart. And that generals right now don't know who they can trust 
because of the infiltration of AI, alien AI in our system, and that we also have AIs that are fighting each other, okay, and so on. So I realize this might be a lot to take on that people out there, some of them just get overwhelmed and don't even want to hear about it. But if you don't educate yourself, you're going to become food and prey for one of these, you know, uh, situations. And so I think it behooves you, especially if you have children, to educate yourself, to educate your children, to begin to look at the world in a more holistic way, understanding that we're part of a multiverse, understanding that you're part of it, that you're a reflection, that your children are a reflection of this, and that they will also have to face this in their future. So um, I think I've covered a lot. I guess I'll shut this down now. There'll be some more things that I haven't even touched on. I do recommend my book, Rebel Gene. I anticipated that right as I re released it, which was February 14th, 2020, we were going into the COVID thing. I knew that we were going to be dealing with AI. I wrote, took a couple of years to write my book. So I wrote about this. I wrote, wrote about these challenges that we're facing. And, uh, and I tried to also give some, some you know, uh, encouraging, I guess you could say, uh, words and so on. Um, I can say that there are many remedies for people that think they have so-called COVID, they've been infected, they've been sprayed by the bioweapon, um, they've been hit by you know, the, um, the scalar wave that it's also riding on, the 5G that also in increases its uh, power, so to speak, it, you know, and connects with your you and, and all of this. Um, it's important to know that we have a radiation-filled terraform environment that we're living in right now, that you as a being are having to transform your own DNA and transform your own self to deal with what you're coming across, to, in a sense, mutate your own DNA. And you have the ability to do that. So what the real challenge is, is who's going to be master of your human body. That's what the battle right now is all about. The battle on planet Earth is over the bodies that the humans occupy here on planet Earth, because that is the vehicle that allows the aliens, the various beings, the AI to navigate this this environment that we call Earth, life on Earth, the planet. So that's why the vehicles are so, it's such a contentious area. So as such, understanding that you are not your body, but your body is your vehicle, and therefore you need to take as good care of it as possible, have mastery over it, and other either you master your body or this connection to the AI um, operating system, if you will, is going to do it, okay? And that's what the future looks like. So in a sense, you could say it's push comes to shove on planet Earth to push humans to recognize who they truly are and what they are truly capable of, that they can no longer rely on being dependent on these negative systems to carry them through and to make life you know, easy because in reality, it's us. We can save ourselves. We are part of source. If you truly believe that, then you must understand that you have access to that energy to bring it in. And one of the ways is through meditation, you know, a careful meditation that activates the various chakras um, which is all part of the sort of physical system that this body is, is, is manifest. So um, thank you for listening and watching. And hopefully this video will contain enough information that it, it's, um, if anything, just triggers uh, further thought. I encourage you to do your own investigations. Obviously, I'm not claiming to be um, all-knowing but I have a great deal of information that's come through me. I, I, my attempt is to trans, you know, transfer it to, to you 
out there and then you do with with it what you will so uh take care and um thanks again for watching bye bye プロジェクトキャメロットケリー・キャスディさんのお話でした、えー、第2弾ということでこれで約1時間トータルで1時間ちょっとということになるんですねまあビッタンピーシーズでいろんな動画があるんですが全体像を捕まえる全体像を把握するという意味で、えーケリーさんのこの1時間のまとめの動画というのは非常に有益ではないかと思うんですね、えー、残念ながらそのレプテリアンがあー CIA アメリカの CIA を支配しさらにその CIA を支配しているものがバチカンであるとまあよく言われているようにシティ・オブ・ロンドンバティカンそれからワシントン・ DC とこの3つが世界の拠点であると言われていますが、えー、たまたまあ本日ですね4月の16日は日本の菅首相がですねバイデンさんに会いに行ってるんですがそのバイデンさんはバイデン大統領と言われているんですがどうも本人ではない。えー、クローンであるというふうに言ってますねあ大統領を演じているクローンに会いに行った日本の首相というのも何かうんクエスチョンマークが出てきますまあそんなところであの、えー、今日も見ていただきまして大変ありがとうございます、えー、今日はここまでですありがとうございます Thank、you